Um, Ron Van Warmer, who follows us here at Radio Woodstock, made a good point <laughs> that another great movie to throw in the, in the mix that predicted kind of what was going on with our politics was uh, was was what movie? It was called The Candidate. It was Robert Redford. Oh, Robert Redford, yeah. 1972. Was it that early? Yeah, and uh, just to really, uh, it was a, it was one of those films when I was a kid watching it uh, had a huge impact on me and politically. Uh, I just it, it opened my eyes to what I thought. Oh my God, politics is just a game. It's just a game, and there's really uh, there's there's nothing about it that isn't business. And the moment I remember, if I remember it correctly, from that movie, was at the end. After I mean, uh, uh, Redford plays uh, kind of like an upstart guy who's not expected to win. He's an idealistic lawyer right. who really didn't think he could win. Nobody thought he could win. He was just a guy to put up against the guy who was a well-respected, long-term conservative uh, guy. Right, who was there. And, and lo and behold, not only does Redford get the nomination, but he wins the nomination. He, yeah. All right. And at the end of the film, when he should be thrilled that he's won it, the camera shows him totally perplexed. What, what do I do now? What do I do now? <laughs> Which is yeah. healthier to me than someone who thinks they know it all, yeah. and you know, go in, go in with a, with a plan they're not going to alter. So yeah, good, good point. Can, the candidate is a film of that zeitgeist, that seventies well, zeitgeist, following the sixties. Yeah, uh, really pointing to today. Patrick Crowan, what did we learn in class today? You picked my favorite movie to talk about. I got to tell you that, man. Network. I loved it from first time I saw it, and I've seen it many times. And when Joe did that rap. I pictured him, honest to God, this is beautiful about being a listener at home on the radio. My mind's eye saw Joe on a little stage <laughs> off Broadway doing that, man, because that guy really, really suits him. And I loved it. <laughs> well, yeah, Joe's about ranting. Well, and about that, I mean, can you feel it, man? I identified with this guy immediately when that movie happened. I don't know what, 76? I was already a lost soul, bro. <laughs> When this what were thing you doing in 76? 76, I was writing my P.O.T. poster up in Vermont. I was working in a mill for $2.30 an hour, along with a bunch of other people like me and a bunch of real Vermonters who were like third and fourth generation people. And that was 76. And uh, I, I'd been bitter since uh, George had come west in 1966, and I found out that it was me getting the shaft. While I was looking to join all that right-wing jive, uh, I was being hosed by the corporate people. I was into this being a corporate trip many, many years ago and wrote about it back then. About uh, I, I wrote a little doodle of uh, different corporations for each star in the uh, old Star Spangled Banner there. And uh, I was really bitter about them, you know, with a red, white, and blue uh, credit card, and yet they're a corporate outfit that doesn't give a damn about the USA. You know, you can be a lefty and be for the people, man. I don't see why the vets don't just get a card that entitles them to Medicare when they get their discharge. Next case, don't bug me, man. Uh, you don't have to wait till you're 65. You already got this and that that you need taken care of. 22 guys a... <coughs> A week or something, kill themselves. I mean, it's just crazy, and uh, so that's why uh, I uh, I feel happy about what's coming up. You got Bernie Sanders there. You got Trump. I call him Franken Trump. He's he got that thing, uh, make America great again, and this guy even got it copyrighted, trademarked. Yeah, trademark. Okay, let me tell you something about slogans. They had whip inflation now. They had <laughs> win with Wilkie. And now you got uh, make America great again. Slogans are meaningless. There's only one slogan you will ever hear that is valid. And that is, slogans are meaningless. <laughs> Put that on your car bumper. Now, let me get back to Socrates, a street dude. I was happy to hear that. I got more respect I for him. I compare him to you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, he, he could hang Just out. Just watch out for the hemlock. Okay? Ah, yeah, yeah. He could hang out on the corner. He could definitely hang on the corner, man. But uh, the whole Trump and Franken Trump thing, uh, I saw, I begin to see the fraying of the tapestry. We watched that trip. That dude was uneasy. 
go look at it again, because there's times when he'd start to see himself ordering, he'd say, the immigrants, forget the wall thing, and then he'd look around again. He's like a big old Schwinn bicycle with no chain on the sprocket. It's there, but it ain't gonna happen. I'm predicting this just like I predicted he'd give them trouble. The man is already on the fade. Because even those 30 thou that were there, waiting in front for something they dug, there was not the big applause factor here and there. Look at that thing again, other than the big jet mobile flying over. That was about the show. He had nothing much, oh, the immigrants, the immigrants. He was like a bad comic, you know, tap, tap, is this mic on? Yeah, are, are you out there? So let me ask a he question, was scrambling. question of the group here. <clears throat> What's the difference between Trump doing that and George W. Bush as president dressing up in military, getting on an aircraft carrier and saying we've won the war when we were getting our asses kicked? I mean, what's the difference? The difference is that at least we know Trump is a showman. The difference is when we George Bush was president <laughs> and did the same thing. We weren't laughing at George Bush at the time. We weren't laughing at him at the time. It was nervous. It wasn't entertaining, right? Right, and and and, and there's a real interesting article in Rolling Stone. Uh, Mike Taibbi is he the writer there? Oh yes. yeah, yeah. His political writing. He's written an article about why Trump isn't funny anymore, and what and he and he describes the incident that turned. It turned it to where it, 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 he's not funny anymore because he's inspiring the people who are following him to do things that are. Uh, uh, there were two two uh, young men apparently who um, had beat up an immigrant, uh, or I think it was, and when they were arrested and they explained that it was Donald Trump uh, who inspired them and and that they should go down to the border and and. No, I agree with you. That's Shoot the that people. ultimately and it's not funny probably what's going to bring him down is that <clears throat> he, if he's smart, he won't get more, he, he won't get too popular on this because the people who will start claiming that he's their leader are going to be people he doesn't want to be associated. with. Well, and what yeah. he said was <clears throat> uh, the people who uh, follow me are passionate about uh, what, what what we're talking about, and that's that was his response to somebody being beat up. So look, um, let's not forget. He's the only one out there, whatever we think of his values, who's not kowtowing to the money people, and he's the only one who's not afraid to speak what's on his mind. He is the money people. The guy's got ten billion. He's a hustler. He's as slick as grease. I wouldn't trust him as far as getting out of sight. I mean, I you could look at him. I mean, you got to use common sense on some things. If he wasn't here, he'd be working in the circus. Or he'd have something on the road, or he'd be managing a team or something. He's a he's a hustler, and he's great at it. And all I'm all I'm su suggesting is how much less of a hustler he is than the other candidates. That's my only question. Well, so at any rate, with that in mind, we are going to leave here, much to <laughs> the delight of other folks. Uh, but here's the good news. If you keep the dial tune right where it is, 100.1 frequency on the airways, Ron Van Warmer will keep you company the rest of the morning with good, Bye, vibes kids. And good music. Have a good